Alex from Starfy here with a little suspension talk. So this is our GD STI swap GC chassis. So a lot of the stuff that you're seeing underneath here is all GD. And we just put in a fatter front sway bar. Now we had a fat rear sway bar or fatter, if you will, the car is very light. So this is a 22 mil in the back and we just put in a 22 mil in the front. The back is adjustable, so you can see that it's got a three point adjustability. And then the front is adjustable as well, but, but I don't think with the clearances that we got going on here and these pair and end links, we're gonna be able to get it into that other point. Regardless, what are we doing with sway bars? So basically we're controlling roll and we're shifting cornering loads from one end of the car to the other. When you put a fatter sway bar on an axle like we did here in the front, what we're doing is that we're controlling the body roll better up front and that means that your camber as you're driving, so it doesn't have too much static camber, so it's about almost two degrees, negative two degrees of static camber. It is McPherson strut, so basically as you're cornering, the unfortunately you lose camber, so you go from here and then you start going into this direction and that decreases your contact patch to the ground. So if you have less roll, then you maintain your camber. Um, and by maintaining your camber is you maintain the contact patch to the ground, which is a good thing. Now in the back, uh, the, sorry, the, the difference between the back and the front or the, the balance between the back and the front is that you, the, the stiffer of a bar on a particular axle that you have, the more cornering load you transfer to that particular axle and it will slip first. So conventional knowledge has it that if we put a fat rear sway bar on, it will oversteer more and then vice versa. If we put a fat front sway bar on, just like we did right now, it will understeer more. However, you are balancing this with the changes in camber. So what I'm trying to do here is get less of a camber change under hard cornering and have enough rear bar so that the car doesn't plow. 22 mil front, 22 mil back with some adjustability should allow me to do just that on this chassis. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.